there are reasons, obviously, uh, for the formation of a globalization because you know it's cost effective and also it's efficient for multinational companies. But now, with the disruption, for example, Ukraine crisis, uh, you know, U.S. restrictive trade policies toward the Chinese side, etc., pandemic. Uh, so, for the multinational companies, they have to make some changes to uh, adapt to the new reality. Um, but then, here's the question: Can they be free from geopolitics? The effects of that. We should not exaggerate uh, the risk. We see companies uh, moving their facilities to Southeast Asia. Actually, that's uh, natural for the Chinese economy. China is at the stage to move some of the labor-intensive industries uh, to other countries. Right? Uh, I don't think that's a bad thing for China. Uh, that's a, actually a good thing for China because uh, that means the Chinese industry has to upgrade. And it's uh, good for surrounding countries, uh, ASEAN countries, uh, India, you just name it, all the developing countries uh, in Asia. That's going to help uh, China's uh, geopolitical situation because uh, those countries will be more integrated uh, with uh, China's uh, manufacturing. So, as Ben just said, uh, I don't think uh, you know, there will be a day that China is going to lose uh, the status uh, of uh, world's factory. I really don't think, uh, at least uh, in the next uh, 10, 20 years, uh, uh, China is still going to be the hub, the great hub of uh, world manufacturing. And uh, I firmly believe because of the size of China and also because of the completeness of Chinese industry, it's uh, very, very difficult for high-end industries uh, to leave China. That's almost impossible, okay? We, you know, this is a vast country, vast territory, vast population, uh, like our foreign friends here. They still want to invest into China just because uh, the size of this country.